very good afternoon to all of you so i would like to invite Okay, sir, your voice is not audible. I cannot hear you. Yes. Now, audible. Yes, now it is audible. Okay, okay. So, uh, okay. Again, I would like to invite Dr. Jyoti Singh. She received PhD from Department of Mathematics, MNIT, Allahabad, in 2015 under the supervision of Professor Shivdat Kumar. She has also worked as postdoctoral fellow in HRI. Allahabad in 2014, TIA for Mumbai from 2014 to 15, and IIT Bombay from 2015 to 16. Currently, she is an assistant professor in the Department of Mathematics, VNIT, Nagpur. She has published seven research papers in reputed international journals, and she has delivered ten invited talks in various workshops and seminars. So now, I, I uh, now I request to Dr. Jyoti Singh. this is start your lecture on singular value decomposition yeah thank you sir thank you very much and also i would like to thanks for giving me this opportunity to talk here uh, okay thank you rakne sir also and the uh, organizer of this uh, workshop so in this talk i will discuss about uh, uh singular value decomposition which is an important uh, important result in the linear algebra okay, so first let me share my screen So you can see my screen. Yes, yes. Okay. Visible. You can. <laughs> yes. Okay. So I will start this lecture. So in the linear algebra, the singular value decomposition of a matrix is a factorization of that matrix. Actually, I am using the same uh, iPad for this one, so that um, I think I should off my camera also. what is the singular value decomposition singular value decomposition is the factorization of uh, a matrix into three further matrices it has some uh, some interesting algebraic properties and conveys important geometrical and theoretical insights about linear transformation and also it has it has some important applications in in many fields particularly in data science so in this talk i will try to explain the mathematical intuition behind this singular value decomposition so singular value decomposition so what can be the content of this talk so first i want to and give the statement of the singular value decomposition precise the statement and then uh, so to prove this uh, result we need a lot of preliminaries so in the preliminaries so In this preliminary part, 
I want to explain first four fundamental subspaces of a matrix. Four fundamental subspaces of a matrix, and then I will explain direct sum decomposition. direct sum decomposition of a vector space and then a spectral theorem for real symmetric matrices and last eigenvalues I'm sorry, there is some problem in my pencil. Eigenvalues of the matrix A transpose A. And um, after completing this preliminaries, we will come on the proof of the singular value decomposition, algebraic proof of this one. And uh, then, and the last, I want to give some application of singular value decomposition. So let me start with the statement of this uh, result singular value decomposition. So, uh, so singular value decomposition actually do the factorization of a matrix in two orthogonal matrices and one diagonal matrix. So suppose we have, suppose, Let let A B N M cross N real matrix. And suppose there exists. Yeah, this this matrix A is uh, M cross N. That means it is maybe it is rectangular or square matrix. Suppose there are there are two orthogonal matrices U and P where U is from <coughs> the set of matrices of size N cross M. And the second matrix V is from, uh, it is from M cross M. And the second matrix is from Actually, there is there is some problem in my iPad. I think so. I want I want to switch off my 
iPad and then I will come back. Is it okay? Hello. Hello. Yeah, so I want to uh, disconnect this one. I want to switch off my iPad and then on. So I think then I, there will be no problem. Okay, so I will uh, rejoin in five minutes, uh, two minutes, I think. Okay, I will start now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if we have a matrix uh, of size M cross N, which is real matrix, and suppose there are two orthogonal matrices, U and B, of size M cross N, and one diagonal matrix, matrix sigma in R with non-negative diagonal entries 
diagonal entries sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma m says that a can be written as u sigma v t transpose of v so any matrix a which is m cross n matrix can be decomposed or can be factorized in three matrices these three matrices where this u and v are the orthogonal matrices and the sigma is an diagonal matrix so uh, we say that it is a singular value decomposition here yeah, it is decomposed in this one and it is called a singular value decomposition Okay. So now I will start uh, to prove this result. We need some preliminary. So first I will start with four fundamental subspaces. Four fundamental subspaces. So suppose we have a system of uh, uh, linear equation in n variables with m equations. So we can write that system of equation as ax equals to b, where a is coefficient matrix of m cross n, size n cross n, and this x is a column vector, n cross 1, and this m is a column vector of size n cross 1. Okay, and so this uh, yeah. So if any um, matrix is given, then we can view that matrix as a linear transformation. Or we can say that always there induced a linear transformation from the vector space. Since this A is of size M cross N, so that means we can write a linear transformation from Rn to Rm which is defined in this way ax where x belongs to this rn and we can easily prove that this dA is a linear transformation so so first fundamental space is subspace is null space so what is null space here null space so first fundamental Subspace is null space of A, which is denoted by N of A, is the elements of Rn, that means of domain, such that image of these elements will be 0. Ax equals to 0. So it is also a subspace of Rn. So this is our first fundamental space. Now the second is second is column space of A. So what is column space of A? So here we can uh, suppose. So if we have a, a is a coefficient matrix, then we can say let C1, C2, Cn be column vectors of A so of A then it can be written as uh, these are the columns of A C1, C2 and this Cn so if we write Ax then Ax can be written as X1, C1 uh, this X is X1, X2, Xm so this can be written as x1 c1 plus x2 c2 plus xn cn so that means it is a linear combination of combination of column vectors vectors so and the linear combination of column vectors belongs to the linear span of c1 c2 cn and this actually this linear span of c1 c2 cn is called as column space so this is called as column space of a and which is 
denoted by C of A. So the subspace of uh, so here I can write. So the, what is the column space of A? Subspace subspace of R N spans by column vectors vectors of A. So this is the definition of second fundamental space, which is column space of A. Now the third fundamental space is a row space of A. So similarly, we can define the row space also. The row space of A is the linear span of R1, R2, Rn, where R1, R2, Rn uh, are the row vectors of A. So which we can write as subspace of Rm is spanned by by row vectors of A of A. So here R i is a row vectors of of A. So this is the uh, this is our third fundamental space. Now the fourth fundamental space subspace is left null space of A, which is left null space of A, which is denoted by N of transpose of A. So by this notation, we can uh, uh, we can give the definition left null space. That means it is the null space of tra A transpose, <laughs> transpose of the matrix A. So here, you can define this one as also, you also, Y belongs to Rm such that transpose of A, Y equals to 0. So, um, so since the, uh, this A can be viewed as a linear transformation from Rn to so since this A can be viewed as a linear transformation from Rn to Rm which is defined as to Ax. So if we have the transpose of A that means it can be viewed as a <laughs> linear transformation from Rn to Rn. So that means from here to here. So if some vector B is here, so that means here this will be ATB. And from here, we can see that column space of A transpose is nothing but the row space of A. Now, the direct sum decomposition of vector space. Direct sum decomposition of vector space. So I recall here what is the direct sum if we have a vector space V, suppose V is the vector space and U, W are the subspaces of this vector space V. These are the subspaces such that V equals to sum of U and W and the intersection of these subspaces is zero then we can write this v as this way which is called as direct sum 
of u and w. V is the direct sum of u and w. But here sum means um, the elements of v can be written as the uh, sum of elements of u and elements of w. So this is the next sum, and also we can show that the this uh, yes we have the map from R N to R M R N to R M T A. Okay, so now by the rank nullity theorem here. Uh, so what is the rank nullity theorem? The rank nullity nullity theorem says that dimension of this R N equals to the uh, null space of this T A plus the rank of this T A. This uh, linear transformation. Or we can say that rank of that uh, the corresponding matrix A. So from there we can easily show that we can V uh, which is let me say R N as V then row space plus null space row space is also subspace of rn and null space of a is the subspace of rn and this rn if we say a blue then it is the column space of a plus null space of a so we use this direct sum in the proof of singular value decomposition. Okay. And also we can, uh, moreover, this null space of A is RA pulse, where RA pulse means perpendicular of this RA, that means um, if we take this, uh, that means if we take A and X, then we can easily show that dot product of uh, rows, um, rows of A, that means R i into X will be 0. This is a new orthogonal. And null space of A transpose is C A plus. This perpendicular space of C. Now I will recall the spectral theorem for real symmetric matrices. The spectral theorem for real. So it is only defined for real symmetric matrices. So the statement of uh, spectral theorem is every symmetric matrix, so say this is F, has the factorization. Gamma Q inverse R and where this <laughs> Q are the orthogonal matrix. So you can write it is a, by the property of orthogonal matrix. This can be written as transpose of Q with real eigenvalues in gamma and orthonormal. Eigenvector in the column of Q. So this is the spectral theorem in math mathematics and in geometry and physics. It is called as principal axis theorem. So, uh, so that's why this symmetric matrix is very important because symmetric matrices has only the real eigenvalues and the eigenvectors can be chosen as orthonormal. 
and uh, a real symmetric matrix is called positive semi definite if i guess i should define the semi definite also positive if x transpose a x is greater than or equal to 0 for all x in r so then this this matrix is called positive semi definite matrix now eigen values of eigen values of this matrix a transpose a <laughs> so here this matrix has two important properties always a transpose a is real symmetric matrix real symmetric matrix and the second property is eigen values of of a transpose a are non negative that means they are positive semi definite matrix now we are in the position to prove the singular value decomposition so proof of singular value decomposition so uh, yeah before proving this one first uh, uh, we can guess what our u and b that means what our uh, that orthogonal matrices u and b so here spd so again i will write in sort a in a is any matrix then a can be factorized as u sigma v transpose where this a is n cross n matrix and this is n cross n orthogonal matrix this also orthogonal matrix of size n cross n and this matrix sigma is n cross n diagonal And here also we consider that uh, rank of A is R. Rank of A is R. Then and then this is a matrix of non-negative diagonal entry sigma one sigma two sigma R actually and all others. Uh, values will be zero because the rank of A is R. Okay. Now, I try to guess what is U and V. So, so here we will find what will be our A transpose A. Okay. So, if we write A transpose a transpose A, then this is U sigma V transpose again, this is transpose, and then this one. Now, when we apply this transpose, then it will be V transpose transpose, that means it will be V only, then sigma transpose U transpose. And then it is uh, as it is u sigma v transpose. And now, since this u is orthogonal matrix, that means u transpose u will be one. So, our identity we can say. So it is this one. And uh, since this is uh, the sigma is a, a diagonal matrix with the non-zero integer. Uh, sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 
R. So if we multiply this transpose of sigma and sigma, then we will get this type of matrix. Sigma 1 is square, small sigma 2 square, sigma R is square, and other diagonal will be 0. So it is n cross. So here we can see that the column vectors of V form an orthonormal basis of eigen vectors of A transpose A. Okay, by the uh, by that um, spectral theorem. Hence, the column vector vectors of this V form an orthonormal basis of eigen vectors of matrix A transpose A. And similarly, if we find A, A transpose, transpose, that means it is U sigma Vt, U sigma Vt transpose, then when we open this one, we will get here V sigma T, Vt, and again, since it is, V is also orthogonal, that means we will get here <coughs> so again we will get the same sigma 2 square we will here sigma r 0 0 u t okay so here as the column vectors of u form an orthonormal basis of eigen vectors of a a trans so here we got the idea that what is u and what is v v is nothing but the column vectors um, so v is the if, yeah so the column vectors of v form an orthonormal basis of eigen vectors of a transpose a and the column vectors of U form an orthonormal basis of eigenvectors of A, A transpose. So these matrices, we know that these matrices A, A transpose and A transpose A are positive, semi-definite and symmetric. Hence, they are orthogonally diagonal and the eigenvalues are non-negative. So now, I will start the proof of singular quantity. Okay. So since we know that A transpose A is symmetric and positive semi-definite. So always there exists N, N cross N or two matrix V whose column vector vectors are the eigen vectors of of A transpose A with non-negative eigen values because it is a positive semi-definite so that's why uh, eigenvector, so the eigenvalues will be non-negative, non-negative, 
eigen value so say lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda n so <coughs> if they are the eigen value so we can write here a transpose a vi equals to lambda i because lambda i are the eigen value for uh, this matrix a transpose a lambda i v i for i equals to 1 to so n and here suppose let r is the rank of a so we can arrange arrange the <coughs> eigen values so that in this way we arrange lambda 1 is greater than or equals to lambda 2 is greater than or equals to lambda r and so they are and lambda j equals to 0 for r plus 1 r plus 2 up to n now since they are non negative so we can <coughs> set as sigma i as square root of lambda i for all i equals to 1 to n so note that if we yes so here yeah this is a transpose a v i okay so if we again multiply multiply with b i t a t a v i then it is v i t lambda i v i actually this is nothing but the uh, a v i transpose a v i so this will be since it is a scalar so we can take it is uh, here lambda i v i transpose v i equals to and since <laughs> v is a orthogonal matrix so that means it will be identity v i transpose v i so this will be lambda i which is greater than or equals to z because they are non negative Okay. And since this is uh, this is transpose of A V I A V I, that means this is nothing but the uh, if you take the length of A V I square, then this will lambda I only. Because this is nothing but the A V I coupled square. So from here, e of v i equals to one under root of lambda i, which we give the name as sigma i for i equals to one to n. Now we again set this e v i by sigma i, or we can say it is the length of e v i. Vi by sigma i as ui. Here we denote uh, this one as ui. A vi by sigma i equals to ui. So here we can, uh, or we can say that v1, v2, vn are mapped to scalar multiple, scalar multiples of ui. So from the from here we can say that the set U one, U two, U R is an orthonormal basis <coughs> of the column space. Column space C A. Is it clear? Because yes. Uh, I can explain here also. If we have a matrix, suppose uh, T from V to some other vector uh, space U, and this V one goes to A, V one, <coughs> and here 
it is uh, it is nothing but the sigma 1 u1 okay so that means it is the it map to the scalar multiples of u1 and since this v1 v2 vn are the basis here that means they are linear transformation and also they span free so if we take the image of this one they then they also form a basis and which will be the orthonormal basis by this setting by this setting we can easily show that they are they are nothing but the orthonormal basis orthonormal basis of image of this tree and image of this tree is nothing but the column space of a here this is tree a so if we want to show that it is orthonormal then we can also <laughs> show that u dot uj is the right this as uh, this way then we will get here it is nothing but the chronical delta ij so that means it is one then i equals to j and it is zero for i equals to j equals to z j okay so that means u1 u2 ur is an orthonormal basis of column space of a okay. and now <coughs> by the fundamental uh, uh, subspaces we can draw this figure also if we have linear transformation then we can this is row space of a this is null space of a so if we take the direct sum of <laughs> row space of a null space of a then it is nothing but this rn because they are the subspaces of rn and for rm there are the subspaces column space of a and the left hand space of a transpose <coughs> and the direct sum of this one is nothing but the rn so there to here the map t of a so now we got the orthonormal basis for the column space of a so here this u1 u2 ur is the orthonormal basis for this ca now <laughs> since this is a vector space so always this basis we can extend this basis to the basis of rm so here we can add to it an orthonormal basis This is u is a element is of this type u r plus one u m <coughs> of many we have left null space of A that means null space of A transpose so that so that this this u that means where the column vectors are u1 u2 um is an orthogonal that means we combine here this basis u1 up to ur and then ur plus 1 to up to m by this basis and then this is the orthogonal matrix u we uh, give the <coughs> name u okay. since And since a v i equals to sigma i u i from here from this setting, mm, yes, from this setting a v i equals to sigma i u i. This is for all i. So we have the singular value decomposition. Here we can write a equals to. So we can easily check that. For that one, Let's check here. A. If we write <coughs> the matrix B, which is the column vectors are V one, V two, V n equals to. We can write A V one, A V two, A V n, and then since A. V one equals 
to sigma 1 u1 so this is sigma 1 u1 this is sigma 2 u2 and sigma n u n okay. and this matrix can be written as so if we take the here this is a v so if we take uh, the force multiply with a v transpose here so since it is orthogonal matrix so it will give us identity and here a will be sigma 1 u1 sigma 2 u2 sigma n u1 these are the column vectors and then v1 v2 vn transpose of this matrix and now you can write it is nothing but the u1 u2 u sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma r 0 0 and then v1 v2 v n so that means we are able to write or we are able to decompose a as u sigma v of t so this is the proof of singular value decomposition so now we come on uh, application. So here I will uh, describe one application, which is least square approximation. What is least square approximation? So suppose we have uh, data points. Suppose uh, there are n data points. X1, X2, Y2, Xn, Yn. So these are n data points. Then we have to find, um, suppose it is uh, F and T, find F and T such that this line y equals to s plus t x fit this data. So what is <laughs> our equivalent? We can say that it, if it minimize square root of summation v i minus s plus x i t square i equals to 1 to n. Okay, so this is called the least square approximation so fitting a straight line to m point or n point so that means suppose we have uh, there are some data points then we have to find all this line which fits this data okay. so by this singular value decomposition we can minimize this one so here so first I will uh, write this problem in an algebraic way. So <laughs> we have this equation y equal to s plus tx. So we can write here in algebraically or in the matrix form 1x1, 1x2, 1xn, st equals to y1, y2, yn. So here it was given y equals to s plus t x. <coughs> so um, we can say this is a matrix A, x equals to B. Okay, so now consider this system of a linear equation. So here it is uh, n cross 2, but uh, in general we consider the matrix of m cross n size. So consider so 
I think it is three uh, twenty nine. So can I take five more minutes? Okay, I think it is started from two thirty five. So the talk will be up to three thirty five. So linear equation a x equals to b, where a is n m plus n a real matrix, and x is a known vector, and b is from R M. Now. So there are two cases. Suppose B belongs to the column space of A. That means image of uh, the corresponding linear transformation T A. B belongs to that one. Then using Gaussian elimination, we can find the exact solution. Okay. So for this case, uh, we can easily get the exact solution. Now, if B does not belong to the column space of a <coughs> then we try to find the vector x so that the length b minus ax this length b minus ax is smallest possible this is called the approximation okay. so then we try to find we we'll try to find the vector x so that the length of b minus a x is smallest possible. So how can we get the smallest possible length? So if we take the projection of b in this column space C, so suppose if we take projection. B in C A, then we have the best approximation A X to B. So if I draw here. Suppose so these are some data points. And suppose this is C A, and suppose this is some point B, and this is our A X. So if we put the perpendicular here, okay, projection of B. So this is our B, and we take the projection of B <laughs> in C A. Then, so if it is a x, so it is a x minus b. <coughs> that means that a x minus b is in the perpendicular space of C A. So means that a x minus b is in the perpendicular subspace. A okay. So thus, a x minus b perpendicular to C A, and we know that <coughs> C A perp is um, is equals to the fundamental subspace less null space of A. That means null space of A transpose. So a x minus b belongs to the null space of A transpose, and if this belongs to null space of A transpose. That means A transpose A x minus B equals to zero. From here we will get get A t A x equals to A t B. So thus for A x to be the best approximation, we need to solve the normal equation this. So uh, okay. So here if uh, this matrix A transpose A is invertible then there is no problem we can easily get the solution but if it is not invertible then 
the singular value decomposition SPD of A helps us to solve this normal equation. Okay. So in that case, uh, we apply the SPT. So here, let A equals to U, this one, B and SVT for A. Then this AX minus B can be written as, we put here in place of A, X, B. Okay. So then, uh, I think time is over, so I will... So in this case, we will get here this one, dx minus u. Yes, if we multiply with u, ut, um, but the u is orthogonal matrix, so we can easily multiply this one. Mm -hmm. So here, if we set y equals to bcx and c equals to utb, therefore, if we take the length of ax minus b, which is nothing but the sigma y minus c. So, minimize the length of this sigma y minus v is this one. <laughs> if y is v1, y1, y2, ym, and C is C1, C2, Cm, then it is nothing but this C Y1 minus C1, sigma 2, Y2 minus C2, and uh, up to uh, R, YR minus CR, and then we will get minus CR plus 1, and up to minus Cn. So, minimize the length of this is equivalent to say that sigma 1, Y1 equals to C1. That means... Here we can conclude that yi equals to ci by sigma i gives the best fit. So by the singular value decomposition, we can get the approximation for the good fit. So I'll stop here. Hello. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, thank, thank you, Dr. Jyoti, for a very nice lecture thank on the singular you. value thank decomposition, you, which is a really nice application of linear algebra. Actually, I am thinking this is the application of uh, this is the uh, base on the commutative algebra. <laughs> no, no, so, no, no. Okay. Linear algebra. Yes, yes. So the workshop is based on the linear algebra application mm -hmm. of algebra. So really, very nice. So from participants, if you have any query, any doubt, so feel free to ask to Dr. Jyoti. Otherwise, you can uh, write your uh, uh, queries in the chat box. OK, thank you, Balaji. Um, OK, thank you. So again, thank you very much, Dr. Jyoti, for your nice presentation. So, uh, okay, you. we will meet on the uh, 4 p.m. for the next lecture of the uh, Dr. Raj Kumar on the topic uh, uh, algebraic course over finite fields and rings. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay.